Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the second video in a series on solutions to our formula challenge. So again, our challenge was to write a formula that would return the name of the salesperson that made the first sale in each month out of the year. And that's based on this table of sales data over here and the date column. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to combine that min if array formula that we learned in the last video, how to combine that with either VLOOKUP or index match to return the name of the salesperson here. And I should also mention that in this solution, we're using structured references. So if we just look at this formula here, we're using this structured reference or table notation here. You do not have to use this notation for these formulas to work where we're referencing the names of the columns here in the formula. You do not have to use this. You could use regular range references and you can also turn that feature on and off. And I have a whole nother article and video that explains how to do that. I'll put a link to that below this video. And you can also download this file that I'm using and you can, I'll put a link to that below this video as well. So you can go download this file and follow along. So now let's take a look at an array formula that was probably the most popular solution to the challenge, which was that same min if array formula. It was just wrapped in a VLOOKUP to return the salesperson's name. So on this sheet here, I divided the formula out. This is the entire formula here, this VLOOKUP min if formula, but I divided it out into a few columns here to just make it a little easier to explain. So the first column is this first date column, which is going to return the first date, and it's going to use that same min if array formula that we saw in the last video. So here's the formula here. In this case, we're just using the month and comparing that to the month in the sales date column or the date column over in the sales table here, and then returning that date. So let's jump into the evaluate formula window. I'll just hit escape here, make sure the cell's selected, then go to the formulas tab and evaluate formula. Alt-T-U-F is the keyboard shortcut, and we'll step through this formula to see how it works. So again, the first thing we're going to do here is just evaluate this at month cell. So hit space bar there, that will return the number one. And then we're also going to evaluate uh, this reference. So that will show us all the dates in that date column. Uh, now we're going to use the month function to just return the month numbers for those dates. So I'll hit spacebar again, and we can now see we get an array of month numbers. So here's just the month numbers out of the year for each date in this date column. Again, that's this date column right here. So now we just have the month numbers kind of extracted out of that and returned to our formula. If we scroll down here to the bottom of the formula, uh, we can see that's what's underlined. So if we hit spacebar again, the next thing it'll do is do that logical test to compare the month number, which was month number one, compared to all of the month numbers in our array. We get a lot of falses here. We can see a few trues. So these would be all the cells that contain a, a date in the month of January, all the trues there. And so if we scroll down to the bottom again here, Next thing that's going to evaluate is just this reference here for that date. So we'll hit space bar again. And then the next thing that's going to evaluate is the entire if function. So if we hit space bar again, that's actually going to return the dates from that column for all of the true values. So this would be all the dates in January. Now this is showing the number, the numeric representation of the date, which is the number of days that have elapsed since January 1st, 1900. And then after the, the number after the decimal is the time. So we don't actually see the date there, but that's what's being returned here. These are all dates in the month of January. So the next thing to evaluate is the min function. So again, if we hit spacebar now, that will just return the minimum date or the minimum value from this entire uh, array right here. So I hit min again, and now we see here is our minimum date or our earliest date for all of the dates in January. So that's the result of the formula right there. We could just close the evaluate window, and that's exactly what we see right here. Now we could format that as a date, so we go to the Home tab and just choose a date, uh, something like this, that'll show us the date, or we could go customize it to have a date and time, just like that, to show the time as well. But that number right there, I'll just hit Control Z to go back, that's the number, and then we can use that, that's the lookup value for our lookup function to then return the salesperson name. 
And that's exactly what happens here in column E. We just have a VLOOKUP that's again going to look up the value in this cell right here in our date column over here. So it's going to look in this date column. Even though these are formatted as dates, uh, Excel is still going to just look up that number, which is this decimal number here. So it's still going to look up that number in this column right here. And then when it finds it, it's going to return column two, which would be the salesperson name from that column. So that's really kind of the two-step process that's going on there with that formula. So we hit enter there, we can see that that's exactly the result we get right there. Now this formula here was entered as an array formula. We can see that with the curly brackets up here. This formula doesn't necessarily need to be entered as an array formula because we're just looking up the result or that lookup value that we found from the array formula. However, when we combine these formulas together, and that's exactly what we have in column C, and this is really the result that most people uh, posted as their solution. In this case here, we entered this entire formula as an array formula. And we can see that we have the curly brackets up here in the formula bar on the outside of the formula, or if we just uh, double click or hit F2 to step into this, once we enter this, if I just hit enter right now, you can see it just returns uh, values, except here where the uh, numbers might actually line up with the table over here for a month of May. That's why you get a value there. It's because this five uh, lines up exactly with a month here, but otherwise we get value errors. So I'll hit F2 again, and then we have to use Control Shift Enter to enter that array formula. And it's automatically copied down because this is an Excel table. So the formula is automatically copied down and this updates. So that's the solution with the VLOOKUP and the min if array formula. We also had a lot of comments with an index match with the min if array formula, which is on this sheet here. It's really the exact same formula here. The driver again is still the min if array function, which is this or this formula right here. And then instead of using VLOOKUP, we're using the match function to return the row number that that uh, date is found. So this again, this portion of the formula is going to return the minimum date for that specific month which would be month number one. And the match function is just going to use that as a lookup value for the date column and return the row number. And then the index function just uh, references the salesperson column and uh, that match function will tell it which row to return, which will be that row with the minimum date. Now the advantage of the index match function is that we can, it's a little more flexible and that if, if columns are added to the sales table over here, that won't break this formula at all. We could add a column here, just a whole column G, we could add right here and that formula doesn't break. We don't need to go update it with a new column three reference. So that's one advantage. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that column. Another advantage is that we can return values to the left of the date column. So we could change this right here, just make a very simple change. I'm just going to step into this formula here. Instead of returning a value from the salesperson column, we can return a value from the uh, transaction ID column, that transaction ID column, and I'll hit Control Shift Enter now, and we can now see that we get the transaction ID number for that first sale of the month. So we could add more or more columns to our table over here to return that as another column with the salesperson column. And that way it might make it easier to go find that exact transaction, which is the first sale of the month, especially if our bonus is calculated based on the sales dollars. So if we wanted to do something like that, we need to go find that transaction, return the sale amount. Of course, we could do that with the VLOOKUP as well but this might uh, allow us to do a little more finding and just proof out that our formula works. So there are definitely a few advantages of index match there, but all in all VLOOKUP and index match are going to return the same result for the basic question. So that's how to combine our min if array formula with either VLOOKUP or index match. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to solve this problem with the aggregate function. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.